Children learn best when they are exposed not only to the education that they receive in school, but also to things such as the arts and physical education. With us today from the Eloise Visual Arts and Life Skills Center are Jane Waters Thomas, the executive director, and Brandon Richards, who is uh, one of the co-directors. Thank you so much for showing up today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now I know that the Eloise Visual Arts and Life Skills Center, also known as EVAC, mm -hmm. uh, is a wonderful place for kids to go to not only expand their physical abilities, but also their mental abilities by being exposed to the arts. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Well, I can certainly tell you that, you know, when we began this program um, a couple of years ago, it was a concept. And um, the idea was, at that time, um, to open a space for teenagers to be, a place where they belonged, giving them exposure to the arts, um, to mentors, to after-school tutoring. The idea was to, to build a teen center completely around the arts. And uh, as we began to develop this program, we, we met with Brandon and, and his co-director, Vincent, and realized that we could also bring in the physical fitness component um, really rounding out that complete and total project. Fantastic. Now, how many kids are actually involved with the Teen Center? Right now, we have just over 33 children enrolled, and um, we're opening the new facility um, in November. Um, but right now, we have 33 children enrolled, and, and we're accepting registration. Great. Now, uh, how's everything going with uh, moving into the new center? We're almost there. That has been a labor of love for sure. Um, a, a couple of years ago, the Board of County Commission conveyed a piece of property to our organization and we were able to begin the process of building the teen center and, and through the course of two years, quite literally, this teen center has been built without having to raise funds from any outside effort at all. It has just been amazing. So it took a little bit longer to build the center. Um, school board donated uh, two portables, Tucker Construction and Visors donated their services to do things with dirt that I can't begin to know how to do. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, Crosswired Electric, and I can just go on and on and on, Garrison Land Management. Those guys all came in and said, these are the things we do really well, and we also want to be a part of the teen center that's coming up, as well as even visual images and and sign effects, those two. So um, it's just been a labor of love, but we're open. And we actually had to start teen programming about six months before we could open because teenagers decided they were going to come to art programming with or without facilities. I think that's really awesome that you <laughs> see cool. people in our community, especially young people, wanting to get involved that way. Mm -hmm, definitely. Well, Brian, tell us me a little bit about uh, the basic concept of uh, bringing both the physical and the emotionally mental together in one place. Well, as Jane mentioned, um, Vince and I laid the foundation for filling the lane around the same time that EVAC was, was taking off. And we started with athletics, but we knew then that ultimately we wanted to involve the arts, um, involve a way to expand the mind, um, being that the mind will outlast the body, and it's been proven year after year and so encouraging young people, showing young people just how they can properly express themselves um, and fill that gap between where maybe they don't know and where they would like to know as far as success in life and Femme Lane has been able to do that and working with EVAC has given us a home. Um, she mentioned the construction site, Vince and I having a chance to go there and actually seeing what uh, was a concept at one point in time is now going to be a reality and the young people and the lives that we'll be able to touch throughout our community. So we're, we're very excited and very, very appreciative of the opportunity. That's great. Now, uh, what is uh, something that happens on an average day at EVAC? Oh, boy. Well, on an average day, um, before the center is actually open, what it looks like is um, teenagers mentoring elementary school age children. Um, we have um, middle school. We have, right now, we have about seven or eight middle school students um, that they come in and they mentor the little guys. It's, it's very cool to watch them doing art projects and working with them or maybe they're in the library because at this time our teen program has been housed in the Eloise Arts Center which mm. is right next door. Um, but the older teenagers, the high school students, they're doing homework, they're doing art projects, they're working on, on different things that they, they need to get done in the community. Um, we've literally designated one studio that's just teen arts um, so that they have a place to kind of hang and do their thing away from the little guys. Um, but it looks like four hours of 
controlled chaos <laughs> with lots of color. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and I'm certain that my staff would say the same thing, but it's, it's actually quite beautiful. Um, one of the projects that the teenagers are working on right now is the emotions of art, and it's, it's a, a paper mache mask, and they're doing a mixed media project. What teenagers create from their heads and their hearts about what's going on in their lives really paints a very good picture for us adults to look at for what the future of our world is going to be. Um, and and that, that project is the one that's happening this week, literally. Um, and so it's, it's that kind of thing every afternoon, Monday through Friday right now. That's really the fascinating thing about seeing teenagers and what they come up with when it comes to the arts because they're not jaded yet. They're so yeah. open to the possibilities of uh, what they can come up with creatively, which yeah. is really awesome to see. Completely exciting, completely. And, and I, I love teenagers. I often say to our staff who, you know, we, you're working in one house with about 40 children right now um, waiting for EVAC to open, the actual new facility, I need to say. Um, and so it's funny because the teenagers come in and they come in like a train in the afternoon. They are ready to forget about school, forget about whatever happened on the bus. They want off and out and they want to chill and create. And it is a lot of fun to watch their minds just completely start working and they have no idea that what they're doing is becoming the best problem solvers on the planet through creativity. So it's a lot of fun for me as an educator, it's a lot of fun for me as a program director to watch them get going in the afternoon, even before the little guys get in and they get to mentor, which is another thing, so. That is great. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about the physical side of things as far as uh, getting the body to the same place that the mind is. Sure, sure, we, we began our, our program with the sport of basketball. And of course, it's very inclusive, um, teaching the skills of the game and actually how those skills can translate into what you want to do in life and how you can be successful at life. And uh, we've begun a travel program over the summer, um, incorporated um, an educational piece, so college prep, um, tutoring, um, college visits, um, as well as a community service component. And we coupled all that together with basketball. Um, and, and with, again, I can't, do, I can't do any of this and could not have done any of this without Vince Miller, um, great individual. Um, he's taken our teens as far as Virginia oh, wow. on, on at least two consecutive summers um, with the help of other volunteers. Um, we've hit uh, various colleges to show those young people, hey, you can go to school. Um, whether you play a sport or not, you have an opportunity to expand your horizons. And so uh, through basketball, through, through um, the travel ball, we've allowed these young people to venture beyond the realm of Polk County and, right. and really see what the world offers or holds for them. Really expose them to more than what sure. they might normally be sure. able to see. Now, uh, you mentioned your partner, Vince. Tell us a little bit about him. Oh my goodness, where, where did we start? And actually, Jane had the, the, uh, the pleasure of knowing Vince um, slightly before I did. Um, but uh, just I'll speak first that uh, um, knew him um, coming out of school and his community work that he was already doing more from an art standpoint. Um, he's traveled ab abroad, um, performing, singing, and um, has a true passion for young people and a true passion for enhancement. And um, I just brought that same element from a, a more of an athletic standpoint. And again, the, just the concept of what filling the lane would prayerfully one day be able to be. Um, and, and we've been blessed with Jane and Evac to see that come to fruition, but he's, he's definitely um, full of energy, um, full of um, he's authenticity, and um, he's all about making improvements. Yeah, and I would just say, you know, that Vincent's kind of the, the invisible guy right here for us. Um, I've known Vincent, um, as Brandon said, um, since he was very young, and, um, and it's been fun to watch him grow and develop as a true community leader and inspiration. What he does with children goes unmatched. Um, he is an educator at Denison Middle School. Um, you know, it's Dr. Vincent Miller now, and so you know, for me, being a little bit older, watching him on some of my stages, I don't always say that because that ages me, but um, it has been phenomenal watching Vincent really take a worldview of the arts and bring it back home and fine tune it 
for the advancement of the children that he works with in his own community. So um, when, when looking at possibilities for directors and programs for EVAC, because you know, um, in our program in Eloise, it's, it's about quality. It's about how do we bring the highest quality nonprofit arts programming that we can bring. Um, and when it just was a no-brainer. It was, I've got to call Vincent Miller right now. Let me see if I can locate him. And then knowing in advance, even before talking to him, that he was doing something community out there. Um, he shared with me filling the lane and, and his passion for athletics and arts in the same place, doing the same work, just advancing the lives of, of our teenagers and our young adults. And I went, oh, no-brainer. And then, of course, Brandon was my next introduction. Um, for, for me, Vincent brought me to Brandon. For me, then I should say Vincent brought us together. Yes. And so this has just been kind of the synergy that's kind of working. But um, yeah, Vincent is definitely, um, while, while not present, ever present in this program. Um, his heart and passion goes unmatched. Well, that's the great thing about Polk County. It seems like one person will lead to another person, will yeah. lead to going to the county government, getting funding, to finding a new building. Yeah. Uh, the interconnection that happens in this county is fantastic sure. that way. Sure. Now, uh, speaking of Vincent, didn't he uh, tour recently or with um, the Lion King? He was in the Lion King, and he was in Africa not too yes. long ago. And yes. Brandon could probably tell you more about his travels there. I, I get the snapshot at the end of it, but. Yeah, he's been some of everywhere. He's constantly resonating. Um, and, but the arts are his passion, and I think that's what um, I was most excited about as far as what we would be able to do with the program is actually allow um, him to lead with his strengths and, and know that ultimately us coming together is, is going to be for the, the betterment of a lot of young lives. But the arts are um, so, so encompassing and, and allow for the proper kind of expression um, for young people, and this program is going to do just that. So now. If the community wants to get involved to help uh, with this program, uh, what can they do? Um, you know, we community built this program, so definitely we need community involvement in this program. As we move forward in the years to come, um, even in 2015, which is just around the corner, funding is always going to be the issue. Um, funding and human resources are the two primary issues for every nonprofit organization that, that I come in contact with, um, and we are no different than that. Um, funding um, and volunteer service hours, just, or, or just volunteer hours. Um, you know, we are literally fueled by volunteer hours, and then what happens as a result of our volunteers is just a network of other resources. Um, so obviously, anybody that can make a contribution, we definitely want to see those contributions, but we need artists that have a passion for sharing their talents with kids who are willing to donate an hour or two hours a week. Um, maybe it's dance, maybe it's vocal, maybe it's performing arts theater. Um, I do want to mention that Jay Narove is our music director at Arts Ensemble and EVAC. Um, Jay, like Vincent, isn't here but is dynamic and well known throughout the community. Um, and Jay's going to need assistance as well. Um, so there is opportunity overwhelming to participate in touching lives. I want to just, just say that you know, the deficit in community programming is often found in middle school age children. And this program targets middle school age children and high school students. And so if you have a passion for reaching that population um, of our next adults, we need you. Especially uh, considering how much funding has been dropped and our education has been dropped in the schools as far as uh, going towards the arts and uh, also physical activity. So it's great that kids have a place where they can go at that age Absolutely. to pick that up. And you know, and, and it's easy to point your finger at schools and say, you know, you know, how dare you cut funding. The truth is, is that when funding's cut, it has to be cut. Our school system isn't any other, any different than any other school system in the nation in that they have challenges with budgeting. So it's, it's really quite a blessing to be able to fill that gap, to be able to work in partnership with schools, to be able to do things um, for sort of our children that maybe they're not getting in at school. It's certainly not a reflection on the school system. Um, but that's our job, is to fill the gap. Now, if people actually want to uh, either donate their time or their money to you, uh, what's the best way to go about doing that? 
definitely call our offices at 863-293-2700 or they can reach me directly at janewaterstomas at aol.com. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming out today and telling us everything about EVAC and the wonderful work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, the arts and physical activity are very important to the lives and the learning experience for every child. The Eloise Visual Arts and Life Skills Center is currently doing that in several ways. And if you would like to either donate your time or your money, you can call them at 863-293-2700, or you can go to their website at artsensemble.com.